Short and long glass fibers can greatly enhance the mechanical properties of a plastic part, including stiffness, strength, and impact resistance. When glass fiber is added to plastic, there are some factors that need to be carefully considered. These are related to fiber orientation, length, and concentration. Fiber orientation is going to affect the anisotropic mechanical properties and shrinkage, which can affect the part's potential for warpage. Longer fibers, associated with a larger L over D, or length to diameter ratio, can reinforce the part better than short fibers. Generally, short fiber length is between 0.2 and 0.4 millimeters, and long fibers are over 10 millimeters. Unfortunately for us, though, it can be a real challenge to preserve fiber length in injection molding because of the high shear rates the material experiences during processing. The fibers are broken as they move through the barrel, nozzle, runner system, and restrictive gates at high speed. The fiber concentration is important because an increase in fiber concentration will cause an increase in the material viscosity. This means that materials with a high concentration of glass fiber will have greater pressure requirements for processing and as a result, higher clamp tonnage requirements. Take Enviropro polypropylene as an example. With 10% glass fiber, the MFI is 12 grams per 10 minutes. With 40% glass fiber, the MFI is 4 grams per 10 minutes. That's a 67% reduction. Moldex 3D can help you navigate these issues. With the fiber add-on module, you can predict 3D fiber orientation, breakage and fiber length variation, and fiber concentration. These results, in addition to shrinkage, warpage, and modulus, can be viewed in studio, and the thermomechanical properties can be output for use in FEA through Moldex 3D FEA interface. To run a fiber analysis simulation, we'll start by selecting a fiber-filled material. In our material wizard, this sign indicates that the material grade has fiber properties. Next, we'll set up the processing parameters as usual. And we'll choose the desired analysis type. Finally, we'll select the computation parameters. Check the box next to Run Fiber Orientation Analysis on the Flow Pack tab. In the Advanced Options, we can set the filler type to short, long, or flat fibers and specify the aspect ratio. We can also choose our solver models. The first approach is the fourth orientation tensor closure. It includes three options. Hybrid is the original Moldex 3D fiber orientation calculation solver model. It offers moderate accuracy and short computation time. ORE is the orthotropic closure approximation model, which offers high accuracy but long computation time. And IBOF is the modified orthotropic closure approximation model, which offers high accuracy and short computation time. The second approach is rotary diffusion. It includes three options, the Folger-Tucker, the ARD, and the IARD model. The options for long fiber analysis include IARD and ARD. ARD accounts for the fiber-fiber interactions with anisotropic rotary diffusion, which help to better capture the long fiber orientation distribution profile. The drawback is that there are five parameters to set. IARD is Moldex 3D's patented improved ARD model, which provides improved accuracy and fast computation times. Plus, there are only two parameters to set. The options for short fiber analysis include IARD and Folger-Tucker. Folger-Tucker accounts for the fiber-fiber interactions with isotropic rotary diffusion, which help to capture the short fiber orientation distribution profile. For this project, we'll choose a short fiber filled resin and we will be using the IARD model. The retard principle rate is used to consider fiber matrix interaction. It improves the original Folger-Tucker model's approach, which overestimates the changing rate of orientation tensor in concentrated suspensions. We can also select advanced calculation options. Filler concentration can be calculated with the suspension balance model, which will show how fiber affects filling behavior. Fiber breakage and fiber flow coupling can be considered as well. Flow coupling allows us to see the anisotropic flow behavior influenced by fiber orientation. 
We'll also need to consider the fiber orientation effect on the warp tab and select our micromechanics model. The traditional composite model describes polymer matrix with continuous fibers. The matrix and fibers are two connected constituents of the composite. Both carry loads. Their linkage strongly influences load sharing and deformation. The help and Psi composite model describes polymer with discontinuous fibers. The Mori Tanaka model has been used to accurately predict mechanical properties of composites, especially in the micrometer scale level or higher. In the Mori Tanaka model, it is assumed that the matrix and fiber are perfectly bonded to each other, and the fiber is assumed to be distributed uniformly. We'll be using this model today. Now let's take a look at the results. The model on the left takes fiber flow coupling into consideration, while this effect is ignored in the model on the right. A noticeable difference in the shape of the melt flow front is present around the perimeter of the part. This effect is more pronounced in compression molding, a process in which a charge is placed in a mold rather than passing through a barrel and runner system. Because of this, fibers in compression molded parts can be much longer than fibers in injection molded parts. As we can see here, with fibers oriented in the X direction, the melt flows faster in the Y direction when fiber flow coupling is considered. When fiber flow coupling is not considered, the melt advances in all directions uniformly. When simulating a compression molding process with fiber filled material, you'll get the most accurate filling results when you consider fiber flow coupling. Scrolling down in the filling section to the fiber results, we can see fiber orientation in the X, Y, and Z direction. You can see the fiber orientation through the part shown with vector lines. This result is particularly useful when you use the slicing or clipping tools to see the core of the part. You can drag the clipping plane to the area of interest and, if necessary, invert the selection. Fiber orientation on the skin will show the fiber orientation on the surface of the part overlaid on a shaded model of the part. Now I'll uncheck sync results so that I can show two results for the same model side by side. Fiber length can be viewed either by number or by weight. Looking at these results, we can see that the shortest fibers are just outside of the gate area. Fiber concentration can be viewed by volume percentage or weight percentage. For this part, the fiber concentration is highest in the gate location, followed by the perimeter of the part. In the warpage results, we can see the fiber orientation effect. This result shows the total displacement affected by oriented fiber after the part is ejected and cooled down to room temperature. Random fiber orientation effect is very similar to the previous result, but it shows the total displacement when considering random fiber orientation after the part is ejected and cooled down to room temperature. And last, we can see the modulus results. This information can be exported for use in your chosen FEA software. A link to our video on FEA interface will be available in the description box below. To summarize, Moldex 3D's Fiber Add-on Module is a powerful tool for analyzing fiber orientation, length, and concentration. Our simulation results can help you determine the part's processing requirements, including plastic pressure and clamp tonnage, as well as the part's mechanical properties and warpage. This information will help you specify a machine for processing and also optimize the part design to avoid structural issues.